He firmly secured one end of a rope to the ice surface and tied the other end to a dog. Then, he picked up the dog and, without hesitation, threw it towards the shore. The dog leaped and landed on the shore, but it didn't dare to delay. It rushed forward with all its might because the owner had tasked it with the impossible mission of pulling a man and ten dogs across the ice to safety, all by itself. Togo, despite the daunting task behind him, chose to charge ahead without looking back. The rope stretched taut, and his companions cheered him on. At twelve years old, Togo ran with all his strength, and after numerous charges, the large ice block actually started to move. Seeing this, Sep quickly untied the rope, and at his command, the eager dogs surged forward, and so they successfully made it to the shore. For the rest of the journey, worried that the aging Togo might not withstand the journey, the owner let him rest on the sled. But no sooner had he been placed there than he jumped off. Under his owner's watchful eye, he returned to the front of the team. Having led his pack his whole life, he was determined to die in his rightful place. Yet, few people know that as a pup, he was frail and often sick, nearly abandoned by his owner. Sep believed in the survival of the fittest. Thinking such a dog should be cold, it was only his wife's fervent pleas that saved Togo. Fortunately, the little guy proved his worth. Within a month, he became vibrant and energetic, as if he had endless vigor. Sep couldn't handle him at all and had no choice but to let him roam freely. But little Togo was relentless, strutting around with pride. In the end, Sep had no choice but to lock him in a cage, blocking the entrance with stones. Let's see how you run now, he thought. Then, he left with his sled team for training. Watching them leave, Togo was frantic inside the cage, howling in distress. But soon, he gathered his spirits and began digging to escape. His cage mates were stunned and started imitating him. But the presence of stones outside deterred them quickly. Togo, undeterred, dug six holes in a row and finally succeeded on the seventh attempt. Making his escape, a dog's head popped out from outside the cage and amidst the barks of his cellmates, he followed his owner's scent and dashed towards him. Upon arrival, he disrupted the team's formation, drawing the attention of the entire pack, which then chased after him. Unexpectedly, the next second, Sep, completely soaked from getting ashore, decided to punish the little rascal properly. He locked Togo in a modified warehouse, securing the door tightly. Faced with a hermetically sealed environment, Togo was at first desperate, pacing around in circles. But after calming down, he scrutinized his surroundings and spotted a hole in the roof just big enough for him to escape through. Without hesitation, Togo climbed up with his agile body, and soon there was a crackling noise, followed by a head poking out from inside the warehouse. Watching this little guy, his wife looked on with indulgent affection. Just like that, Togo had escaped once again, continuing his run towards his owner. Sep could no longer tolerate it and decided to personally drive him to the city in a carriage, with his wife looking on unwillingly but powerless to change her husband's mind. Before leaving, Sep warned the new owner that the dog was very mischievous. However, the woman was already charmed by Togo and didn't mind at all. In the city, the house was beautiful, but Togo didn't like it at all. He frantically searched for an exit, only to realize he was trapped. He stepped back, then back again, but his new owner didn't realize something was wrong until it was too late. Meanwhile, back in the wilderness, Sep suddenly heard a familiar bark during his sled team's training. It was Togo, the troublesome dog. Sep couldn't fathom how Togo managed to find him over such a long distance. Seeing Togo's paws bleeding, Sep's heart softened, and he decided to take him back. He tried to place Togo on the sled for a rest, but the dog refused to lie down and instead sat in the lead dog's position. Eventually, Sep placed him at the back, deciding to give Togo a chance to prove himself. Beside Togo, a larger, stronger dog felt insulted and snarled at him. However, Togo instantly became submissive, quickly diffusing the situation and earning his place on the team. As they set off, Sep was amazed to find Togo's speed and endurance far surpass that of his peers. Suppressing his joy, Sep moved Togo forward in the lineup, placing another dog in his previous position. This dog, unlike Togo, cowered in the face of aggression. On the journey, Sep's excitement was evident. He realized Togo was more than capable in every position he was placed in, moving him forward again and again. When the sled team returned, the wife looked up to see Togo firmly in the lead dog's position, with larger dogs following him, none dissenting. 
Togo had proven his worth and stood confidently in the most coveted spot, bringing immense satisfaction to the wife and overwhelming excitement to Sepp. Since then, Togo had become an exceptional sled dog. Even champion teams paled in comparison to his prowess. Togo lived up to his owner's expectations, winning sled dog races in the town time and again. Twelve years passed in the blink of an eye, a period everyone thought would continue to be peaceful. However, the town was suddenly struck by a diphtheria outbreak. Dozens of children were infected, and five had already died. To make matters worse, the town was hit by a once-in-a-century blizzard, making it impossible for planes and trains to reach them. The life-saving serum was 400 miles away, and the town's only hope rested on the sled teams. Without a doubt, Sepp's team, led by Togo, was the best choice. But Togo was now 12 years old, and such a demanding journey was almost too much for him. Sepp's wife strongly opposed taking Togo, but Sepp knew the mission couldn't be accomplished without him. Realizing she couldn't dissuade her husband, they comforted each other before he left. But once alone, she cried, fearing it might be their last goodbye. Due to the urgency, Sepp set off early, with the townsfolk waking up early to see him off. They were the parents of the sick children, and this sled team represented their last hope. Facing the unknown and dangerous blizzard ahead, Sepp geared up and, with a sense of duty, led the sled team bravely into the storm. Facing the daunting blizzard ahead, Sepp geared up and led the sled team into the storm without a second thought. To save time, he decided to cross over the mountain. However, as they descended, the sled speed uncontrollably increased, and the blinding snowstorm made it impossible for Sepp to see ahead. Fortunately, Togo sensed the impending danger and halted just before the sled team could plummet off a cliff ahead. In this perilous situation, Sepp shouted for Togo to run back. Carefully, Togo turned around and charged uphill, but the dogs, paralyzed by fear, clung together too scared to move. Despite Togo's efforts, it seemed impossible for one dog to pull the entire sled team up. Gradually, Togo's strength waned, but under his master's command, he persisted in pulling upwards, his paws bleeding. Thankfully, the dogs began to calm down, turning around and starting to climb upwards. With Togo's desperate effort, the sled was finally pulled back from the brink. Afterward, Togo came to Sep, licking his cheeks, as if to reassure him not to blame himself. Signaling everything was okay, Sepp then noticed Togo's injured paws. Bleeding, but not once did Togo consider giving up. They reached a nearby station by nightfall, where a kind Native American woman tended to Togo's wounds, providing some relief after their harrowing ordeal. Before dawn broke, they set off again, having taken a wrong turn earlier and to save time. Sepp decided to take a risky shortcut, crossing the treacherous Norton Sound. Sure enough, not long after they ventured onto the ice, it began to crack around them. The sporadic sounds of the ice splitting startled even the experienced Sepp, let alone the dogs leading the way, who had never encountered such a situation. Even Togo, usually undeterred, started looking back frequently, uneasy about the dangerous path ahead. Realizing that continuing in this manner was not sustainable, Sepp began to motivate his team. With each encouraging shout, the dogs gradually regained their confidence, inspired by the courage in his voice. After a long journey battling exhaustion and sleep deprivation, Sepp relied heavily on Togo to lead the team forward. Unfortunately, they narrowly missed a crucial handoff with a relay team member due to the howling blizzard and Sepp's overwhelming fatigue. Failing to notice the man's shouts, just as they were about to make a critical turn, Togo seemed to hear something. When the relay team member thought they had completely missed the handoff, he suddenly heard dog barks around the corner and a figure emerged from the storm. In a pivotal moment, Togo had detected the man, allowing Sepp to successfully receive the life-saving serum. After resting at a supply station for the night, they resumed their journey, knowing that every minute saved could mean the survival of another child. The relay team member watched Sepp's departure with admiration, unaware that they would daringly head straight into the perilous strait to save time for the town's children. Sepp decided to risk crossing the strait again, with temperatures plummeting to below 60 degrees and the ice several inches thick. The hurricane's impact was causing the ice to crack dangerously. Stepping onto this path was a gamble with life and death. Not long after, they found themselves without a clear path forward. And even worse, the compass was useless in these conditions, left with only two directions but no guidance. Sepp had to rely on Togo to choose the way, 
In a critical moment, Togo turned and charged towards the perilous right side. Togo's incredible strength and determination pulled them through, but it drained all his energy. Upon reaching a station to rest, the sight of Togo, barely alive in his arms, brought tears to the Native American woman's eyes. She couldn't fathom what Togo had endured in those few days to be so grievously injured. Sep, choked with emotion, struggled with the weight of what Togo had sacrificed. However, the next day, they had to continue their journey. Sep wanted Togo to rest on the sled, but Togo, like an indomitable warrior, kept jumping off, eager to reclaim his position as the lead. Despite spending a night resting, Togo appeared rejuvenated, standing proudly in his rightful spot. Sep had no choice but to secure him with a rope. In the last 40 miles, Sep was exhausted, blinded by the snowstorm. Unable to see anything, he knelt in front of Togo, admitting he could no longer assist, and pleaded with Togo to persevere to the next station. Eventually, Sep succumbed to his exhaustion, falling asleep on the sled. After an unknown amount of time, when Sep woke up, he found the sled had stopped, and the dogs were motionless on the ground. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he approached Togo, who was also visibly exhausted. Sep begged him to keep going, warning that staying put meant certain death. But this time, Togo was too tired to move, no matter how much Sep pleaded. Just when Sep was about to despair, a faint light shone from behind. It was the station staff. Togo had stopped just in front of the station. Having successfully completed their mission, the serum was relayed back to the town, and the last leg of the journey, carried by another musher named Balto, grabbed the headlines, turning Balto into a hero. Meanwhile, Togo lay at home, fighting for his life in that critical mission. 20 teams participated, with 19 of them covering an average distance of over 50 kilometers. They were all warriors in their own right. However, Togo's team ran an astounding 425 kilometers, distinguishing them as the true heroes of the journey. Sep harbored no regrets about their monumental effort, but what pained him most was the irreversible damage to Togo's front legs. As life gradually returned to normal, Togo spent his day sticking close to Sep. However, a day came when Sep intentionally distanced himself from Togo, as he had to work, and Togo could no longer accompany him in the battles against the snow. It was a hard wrenching decision. But Sep had to leave Togo at home and set off with a new team. Togo, watching his owner's departure, felt a deep sense of loss, reminiscent of his younger days, driven by a fierce loyalty and an indomitable spirit. Togo, despite his injured paws, managed to open the door and escape, just as he had done 12 years before. Limping and determined, he ran towards the direction of his master, eager to rejoin the sled team. Miraculously, as he ran, it seemed as if Togo forgot his pain, and his front legs appeared to regain their former strength. Once again, he became the fastest leading dog, a position he was born to fill. Finally, Sep heard Togo's familiar bark and turned to see a sight that took him back to the years of their greatest adventures together. There was Togo running towards him, as if no years had passed and no injuries had ever occurred, embodying the spirit of resilience and loyalty that had defined their shared journey.